welcome all in this session we are going to learn about how to define in-bank support in a stack many structures can have an in-bank support now in order to analyze it using stat we should know how to define inclined support properly because if you are not defining this support properly then the analysis problem may be completely wrong so let us see how we can define inclined support with the help of this particular problem here we have a truss problem in which there are two support support a is hinge support support c is a roller support but it is inclined at an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal so first what we'll do before knowing how to define inclined support in stat let us model this when i come to the support definition then i will show you how to do that so first we will model this problem so in order to model this problem how many nodes we need we need uh, four nodes node a node b node c and node d so uh, we can find the coordinates of these nodes from this sketch as can be seen let us model this problem quickly so the nodes are 0 0 0 2 next is 4 and uh, lastly you have 2 1.5 as you can see uh, i have got the coordinate of this particular node as 2 1.5 let us go to view and uh, see from the front we will join these uh, uh, nodes which we have created go to geometry click add beam and start joining these nodes Well, the geometry has been defined. Next, what I'm going to follow this workflow. After geometry, next is properties. And in the question, I have not uh, given any property for the problem. Since uh, in the question has been asked to determine the reaction, these reaction is not going to depend upon the properties of the material. If suppose it was asked to compute the displacement or stress, in that case properties has to be provided anyway uh, right now what i'll do i will assume an angle section for all these members now to define an angle section for these members uh, what you do you go to section database and uh, say uh, you have indian angle section so you click indian under indian you can uh, uh, see you have different types of uh, standard section and you can explore uh, right now i have uh, to Given angle section, so I'll click angle section. So, what is the size of the angle which I need to define? Say I want to give only single angle section, that is, uh, uh, let us go with ISA 75756. Uh, what you do, you scroll it down, then you'll find here ISA 75756. Since I'm saying it is going to be a single angle section, so I'll click uh, ST. Okay, so I'll click this uh, ST and make uh, and then click add. So see, we, uh, we have this ISA 757576 defined. Now, this property has to be assigned to all the members in the trust. I'll go to assign to view, click assign. So, you see, all the members have been defined. Uh, this uh, section ISA 757576. Next, we'll go to material. Now, material, uh, since we were using standard steel section, the member has been assigned with the properties, material properties of steel. After that, uh, we'll uh, select the specification option. Uh, since these members are a part of a trust, so I'll define uh, this as a specification, which can be done by clicking on beam. Under beam, you have this trust option. Click the this add. Now, all the uh, members have to be defined what? Uh, trust member. So oh, I'll click assign to view. Click assign. All the members is going to be defined as a trust. Finally, let us come to the support. At uh, this left uh, node, at this particular node, we have a uh, pin support. Here we have an inclined roller support. So let us first uh, define a pin support. So we'll click create, click pin, click add. Let us uh, give this uh, support to this node. Let's use cursor to sign, click assign. Done. Next, 
we need to define an inclined support at this particular point. Now, to understand how to define an inclined support, uh, let me come to the problem over here. So, this is the problem. This is an inclined roller support. Now, to define this inclined support, what you do? You define an imaginary node. Here we have an inclined roller support. We will have only normal reaction. So say this is the direction of the normal reaction, which is going to be present over here. Now to define this inclination, what I will do? I will define an imaginary node such that the line of action of the reaction passes through this node C and the imaginary node which we are going to define. Say this imaginary node is I. So the line of action of this reaction should pass through this line which passes through this two nodes CI. And please remember the line which is going to join from the node where reaction has to be present from that point to that point is going to give me the local x axis for the reaction. Okay, so this CI is going to uh, this di direction which is indicating, which is joining from C to I is going to be your local x axis for the reaction. What about Y? Uh, Stat follows right hand rule. Uh, in order to locate the Y axis, as per right hand rule, you are going to have your Y axis. It will be in uh, this direction. Similarly, you can locate the Z axis. Right? So, with reference to C, I'll repeat this uh, with reference to C. When I join from C to I, this is going to give me the direction of the reaction, okay, and which is going to pass uh, about uh, which it is going to pass through this local uh, x axis, uh, local x axis of the reaction. And uh, perpendicular to this, following right hand rule, uh, you can get the y axis also. Now I should know the coordinate of this node i because instead I need to define this imaginary node. Okay, I need to define the coordinate of this imaginary node. And how I can define the coordinate of this imaginary node? So it can be done uh, very easily if you observe what would be the angle of inclination of this reaction. The angle of inclination of uh, this reaction with respect to horizontal, since it is 30 degree, the angle of inclination of uh, this uh, reaction with vertical will be also 30 degree, but with the horizontal, this is going to be 60 degree. So it is obvious that uh, uh, this line CI is also going to make an angle of 60 degree. And what will be tan 60 degree? We compute tan 60 degree. So I have already done that. Uh, here you can see 1.7321. So write it down 1.7321. Now with reference to C, I can define the coordinate of I by this manner. I'll go one unit in the horizontal direction and I'll move 1.73 to one unit in the vertical direction. So I can move to this pseudo node I, that is the imaginary node I. So what is the coordinate of I with reference to C? It is going to be one horizontal and 1.7321, the vertical direction. But with reference to my global axis, say if this is my global axis x and this is my global y axis, how I'm moving? I'm moving in the left hand side. So I'm moving by minus 1. And how I'm moving in the vertical direction? I'm moving in the positive direction with reference to global axis. So it will be 1.7321. So this is one of the possibilities with which I can create a pseudo node and I can define uh, in my stack. There can be another way, one of the other way with which you can define pseudo node is to define say the pseudo node uh, location is at this particular point. So let us say P. How I can move to this point? So you can see this is the line of the action of the reaction which is passing through C to P. So what will be the direction of the local x axis for the reaction? So join C P. So this is the direction local x axis of the reaction cp okay what about y axis y axis will be this one 
following right hand rule. Next, what will be uh, tan 60 degree? Because with reference to horizontal, this normal reaction is going to make an angle of 60 degree. So again, tan 60 degree is 1.7321. So I can move one horizontal over here and then I can go with 1.7321 vertical at this particular point. So for node P, with reference to this, I have this coordinate again 1, 1 1.7321. But uh, I need to know the sign with reference to my global axis. So in my global axis, as you can see, I can moving uh, forward the positive x axis, which is going to be plus 1. But I'm going to move in the downward direction, that is the negative direction, which is going to be minus 1.7321. So instead, when you are defining inclined support, either you can give minus 1, 1 1.7321 as input, or you can give 1 minus 1, 1.7321 as an uh, input to define this inclined support. Let us first define minus 1, uh, comma 1 1.7321 and see uh, what is the reaction. And next, what I'll do, I'll change this uh, coordinate to 1, comma minus 1 1.7321 and see uh, what will be your reaction. And uh, since the definition is going to be correct, your answer is not going to change. So let us see that. Since I want to define an inclined support, I am going to click create. Under create, you can see incline. Here you see inclined reference point. That is the point where I wanted to define the reference to the point from which reaction is passing. So first one, if you see, if uh, this is the point I, pseudo node which I am creating. Minus 1, comma 1.7321. So let me do it here. Minus 1, 1.7321. Fine. Next, I have a roller support. So this roller support is having reaction about which axis? About x axis, as you can see. So when I want to release, okay, you can click and force, but when I want to release, I will release everything except effects. So this effects is the direction uh, of the local x-axis which is uh, passing through the node and the pseudo node. So that is the uh, going to give you the x-axis. So I have got uh, this value. So I will not release effects others I am going to release. Now click add. Next let us assign this uh, to this node. So we are done with this support. Next, let us go with the loading. So, what are the loading we have? We have a horizontal uh, load at this particular node as 3 kN, a vertical load of 4 kN at this particular node. We will go to load case detail, click add. Next, under load case 1, define to those nodal load. So, one was 3 kN, which was parallel to global x axis, click add. Next was uh, uh, 4 kN, it will be minus 4 since uh, it is uh, in the downward direction. Okay. Next, let us assign these load to the respective node where it is present. So, these loads have been applied. Next, click analysis, define command, and the perform analysis no print, click add. We are ready to run the program. Let us run it. Okay, fine. Uh, so you have 13 warning. Let us see what kind of warning you have. I will go to the output file, click done, and uh, you can see zero stiffness uh, in the direction four at joint five. Uh, all these uh, things are coming. Uh, I'll tell you why exactly it is. So what I will do, I will go to utilities, under utilities, you go to command file, see here, uh, you have defined the structure as space structure, since it is a planar structure, you define this as start plane, remove this space and write plane, click save, now this uh, structure whatever has been defined is a planar structure. And when you run it, you can find the number of warnings has been reduced. Now it is coming four warning. And you click this uh, and see what is the warning you have. Zero stiffness in the direction six. Uh, so these all uh, warnings which uh, you are getting, uh, this is uh, coming because you have defined 
all the members as a trust. So this is why these warning is coming. And I'll suggest you can ignore this warning and you can have a look into what is the reaction now. You go to post processing, click OK and click reaction. You go to view, the front view, select. Okay. Please note whatever reaction here you are getting uh, are what? Um, uh, these are with respect to global uh, x and global y axis. So if you want to know what is the normal reaction, so here you see uh, you have uh, the reaction y 3.125 kN and x at minus 1.804 kN. So let me uh, come to this uh, problem. So, what is the vertical reaction? It is, it is uh, positive as you can see uh, 3.125 which is in this direction 3.125 and what about uh, in the x direction it is minus 1.804. So, minus 1.804 it means in this direction. So, what will be the resultant? The resultant will be this one. So, square root of 3.125 square plus 1.804 square. So that is going to give you the normal reaction which will be normal at this particular point uh, which will pass to this point C. Fine. So 3.125 and 1.804 these are the uh, reaction component at uh, the inclined support. Now let me change uh, uh, the coordinate of those nodes. Remember. It will go to support and the support tree is inclined. Uh, remember, I can select this as x and I can select this y as minus 1 and impose, but again, um, uh, I'll uh, release everything except fx. Now, click the uh, change. Next, I'll go to analysis and design. Click on analysis, click save, and let us see uh, what uh, you have as a react. You see, it is coming again same. I hope this is clear how you can define inclined support. So, in nutshell, I can say uh, you have to define an imaginary node such that the line of action should be should pass through those uh, two points. That is the point where uh, you are going to define the support and the pseudo node. And the line which it's going to join uh, is going to be the local x axis for the reaction. And that, that is very important because uh, depending upon the kind of uh, support you have, you have to make the release accordingly. I hope uh, this is uh, clear to uh, Thank you.